Welcome today to our video devotional here at Covenant Keepers Ministries on Thursday, January 24th, 2019. Our command of the Ten Commandments that we're looking at today is found in Exodus 2014. It says, You shall not commit adultery. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 and 28, Jesus made this comment. You have heard that it was said of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Well, I, I think that uh, we've become extremely brash in our culture, in, including Christians in America today. Adultery is acceptable even saying that I want to get on my knees and repent of even making that kind of comment it's become acceptable in our culture both for the Christian and non-Christian to have sex with someone other than the man or woman that we're married to it makes no sense to me but exactly how our culture has quote evolved and we've become progressive it isn't that adultery hasn't been going on for centuries. It, it was usually, even when I was a teenager, it was very quiet. And people would never admit to it. It was destructive. And, and now, hmm, it's acceptable. Hey, okay, sarah, sarah, whatever will be, will be. But I would say this to all of us. This, this command is, is repeated in the New Testament, but if Jesus takes it a step further. He said, if you look at a woman, or let's change this, if you look at a man to lust after him. If you're a woman and look at a man, or you're a man and look at a woman, you've committed adultery with them already in your heart. So this points out what we ended with yesterday. This is the necessity of guarding our heart for out of it are all the issues of life out of it flow every issue of our life and particularly in this important area of sensuality we have got to guard our heart we cannot expect to overcome temptation or avoid it in the first place if we entertain unchastity in our thought desire and conversation gd boardman makes this comment on this command Enough that I simply remind you that whatever fosters or suggests unchaste desire or thought, whether it be in painting or statuary, opera or dance, romance or song, ambiguous illusion or the figment of one's own imagination, as in the prophet Ezekiel's vision of the chambers of imagery, it must be instantly, remorselessly, everlastingly denounced. That puts a nail in the coffin, doesn't it? Bishop B. E. Hopkins says, Be sure that you keep a narrow watch over your senses, for those are the sluices which, instead of letting in pleasant streams to refresh, do commonly let in nothing but mud to pollute the soul. T. Watson observes, That which may, makes adultery so heinous is, that it is, all, it is sin after remedy. The heinous crime of committing the sin after you already have the remedy. God hath provided a remedy to prevent this sin, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. Therefore, after this remedy is prescribed, to be guilty of fornication or adultery is inexcusable. It's like a rich thief that steals when he has no need. Wow. I read this somewhere. The importance of every man and every woman laboring to gain the fear of God in their life because by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. And so in a culture that it's become acceptable to, to have an open marriage, polyamorous relationship where you have really more than one spouse just don't call it polygamy we call it polyamorous our other names today the bible says you're not to commit adultery period do not commit adultery so if you're listening to this and, and you've done that 
you've committed adultery and you've not been repentant, I call you to repentance today. Repentance means that you turn from your sin and you turn to God. You come clean and let the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If you've been entertaining thought because of whatever your ear gates and eye gates have allowed in, it's time to stop and put a stronger gate over your eyes and over your ears, over your mind, over your imaginations, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, that these things will not take hold and have a grip on you. So we really have to pray about this, don't we? And ask for the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit to cleanse us today. Father God, in a world so exposed to sensationalism of sex, so many Christians have followed the world example and not obeyed the instruction of the Word of God. Cleanse our thinking today. Cleanse our hearts today. Purify our minds. We plead the blood of the Lamb of God over everyone listening to this video today. We pray, God, that you will wash us and make us whiter than snow. We pray, O oh God, that you'll forgive us for our impurity. Cleanse us from every filthiness of the flesh and spirit. And help us to perfect holiness in the fear of God. Lord, I, I pray a drawing to you, not a pulling away from you. By the action of the Holy Spirit today, that we might be a people set apart, living lives pleasing to the Lord for the glory of God. I ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Well, let's heed the scripture. You shall not commit adultery. Be blessed as you obey. And may God refresh our relationships with our spouse and our families. Let it be so. Amen. Have a great day.